Hello, it's Miss Stahl, and we're going to be painting with watercolors today. So we're going to try six different watercolor techniques, and we're going to practice a little bit on a separate piece of paper with different sections made out of tape, so that you can have a little bit of room to experiment before we move on, because watercolor tends to be a little unforgiving if you make an oops. I've got my paintbrush, as we know about. I have water. I have a sponge that I can wipe my brush off on. I have my watercolors that are the colors of the rainbow. I don't have black or brown, so it's red, orange, yellow, green, turquoise, blue, indigo, violet. Now when I go, I'm just gonna start putting water into the pigment. I'm not touching my bristles to the pigment because I want to keep everything nice and squeaky clean. I'm going to add some stripes of tape that I have been slowly de-sticking because I don't want my paper to rip and the tape is too sticky. And now I'm aiming to make six little zones with my tape and I'm going to try to keep them nice and separate. So the first thing we're going to go over is a wash. And to keep it simple that's just a thin layer of color so I'm going to make sure I have plenty of water and I'm going to use turquoise today. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to set us up for another technique called glazing. And I'm just going to set it up now with a thin wash that we will come back to, but it has to be dry. Let's do values. We're going to start with values. So I'm going to load up on blue violet and get lots and lots and lots of pigment um, so that I have a really nice dark value to start with. I probably have a bit too much water on my brush or a bit more than I want anyway, but I'm going to get straight to the water and go back underneath and meet the value that I've already put on. I'm not going to add more color unless I need to add darkness at the top again, which I am doing now. Oh, I can wipe my brush off because I am going to do bleeding next and I think I'm going to change colors. So remember, we're going to try to keep our colors clean, and I'm going to jump over to the warm colors. And starting with yellow, which is the hardest to keep clean, so that's why I'm starting there. And I'm just going to add a bunch of wet yellow all around, and soon I'm going to put colors next to yellow, not on top. Um, next to them, so that they kind of start to swirl and bleed into one another, which is just a very dramatic way of saying this. Um, but if I start adding too many colors on top of each other, they might get a bit muddy, which I can show you in a moment. What we're trying to avoid when I say muddy colors is if I did like orange, and this is just a swatch, so it's okay, blue, and they start to really neutralize because they are compliments, which I don't really want that, but maybe you do, so that's totally up to you, but for now I'm avoiding it. And now I'm going to do wet on wet. I'm going to start with a green wash. So when I'm doing this, uh, I'm going to keep the paper a little bit wet while I'm adding onto it. I'm starting with a quite a thin wash of green. And strangely, I don't want to have too much water on my brush on either of these layers because I want to not oversaturate the paper. Um, but you can see it's very atmospheric and a little bit dreamy and floaty. You can't really get hard edges when you're doing wet on wet painting. And now I'm going to find a use for this magical thing, a white crayon. So I'm using my crayon to make some designs and patterns. I obviously can't see very well. Uh, but all shall be revealed after a little bit of magic is performed. And this is called wax resist painting. And I'm just going to do a wash over this. I need some more water. What? Revealed. Now we're going to go back to this and get on the glazing drain. Now I'm just going to get a little bit of pigment. You can adjust dry watercolor washes 
with other colors or with the same color and you can get really sharp lines much sharper than the wash or the wet on wet um, and you can see that I'm doing that with the blue blue and I can add more value with the same color to make it darker as the same color so if that's a shadow on a box and I can also do a little bit more of a subtle gradation but it's easier if I have a light dry paper underneath as you can see and now it's time for the big reveal. Oh boy. Huzzah! So those are six whole ways that you can use watercolors and you can experiment and kind of mix and mash some of them up. Also remember, if you have any extra scrunchies or long sleeves, roll them up. We don't want to get paint all over everything. And that's it for now. Great job. Let's get to it.